What's up, Scotters? And welcome back to another episode of KNN. In today's episode, let's wrap up what happened to Roy Kim. From him being released from his charges of being involved in the JJY group chat situation to now him enlisting in the Marine Corps. Then let me update you guys once more on the end room situation, which will probably be my last report on this issue as the real mastermind of this entire deal has been finally arrested by the police. Alright, up to the first news. Roy Kim's entertainment agency, Still Music Entertainment, has officially announced that he'll be enlisting in the Korean Marine Corps on June 15th. And as many of you guys are probably already familiar with, Roy Kim was under a huge controversy during the entire Burning Sun and JJY group chat ordeal when it was noted that he too shared an explicit picture with others. And initially, this news misled the general public to assume that Roy Kim was just like JJY and Choi jong who sold romantic songs to fund their disgusting private lives. But through police investigation, it was eventually found out that Roy Kim was just charged with sharing one explicit photo. And turns out, the picture he shared was just a screenshot of an explicit photo that has a female celebrity's face photoshopped onto, and even this was just him telling other people that this is a fake picture, defending the victimized celebrity. Naturally, he was released from his charges after investigation. But I guess Roy Kim's situation is a perfect example of why it really sucks to be a celebrity. Because sometimes when you get involved in something, you can really never undo the damage to your public reputation. Even if you truly aren't what people think you are. And in the K-pop industry, the emphasis on you having a clean public reputation is much heavier than in other entertainment industries of different countries. And that's probably why Roy Kim hasn't really done anything since being involved in this JJY group chat situation. Of course, by now, a lot of people do understand that Roy Kim wasn't like JJY or Choi but I'm sure there are people out there that think otherwise too. And initially, I thought this was the reason behind why Roy Kim was enlisting in the Korean Marine Corps. Obviously, I've told you through previous videos where I talk about MC Momor Steve Yu, who were basically forced to retire after trying to evade their military services. The military services are taken very seriously for Korean male celebrities. And using that same logic, enlisting in the Marine Corps is generally viewed as one of the biggest boosters to your health. Yo. I just got an emergency text from the government. Apparently there was an earthquake here. On with my video. So going back to the topic, using the same logic, enlisting in the Marine Corps is generally viewed as one of the biggest boosters to your public reputation that you can get with your time in the military. Because not only is the Marine Corps going to be tougher than other branches of the military, but it is impossible to be drafted into the Marine Corps in Korea. Because if you're enlisting in the military just to complete your mandatory service, you're automatically by default drafted to the army. To enlist in the Marine Corps, you actually have to request it yourself, get your documents screened, get interviewed, and go through a physical ability test and whatnot. The the point is, enlisting in the Marine Corps generally signifies that you're willing to put yourself through a tougher challenge and is generally viewed positively here in Korea. But apparently, Roy Kim isn't enlisting to boost this public reputation. It's been reported that Roy Kim had planned to enlist in the Marine Corps all along and that he had been telling his family members and friends about it for a long time. So kudos to this man and hopefully he can finish his service time without getting injured. On to the second news. The mastermind behind this entire end room issue has finally been arrested by the Korean police. And apparently it's a 24 year old man who goes by the nickname God God. God God. Very nice. His personal information has not been revealed yet, but at this pace, I think the Korean police will go ahead and reveal it in the near future. So once his personal information and his pictures are out, I hope you guys can go do some Googling on your own and see what this guy actually looks like. But at this point, I think I can bet you guys money that he's going to look very similar to the three other people that I mentioned in my previous video. Remember the ones that look like total social outcasts and someone I would definitely want to just punch in the face for no reason. At this point, to help some of you guys understand the situation a little bit better, because you guys are probably a little bit confused. In my previous KNN episode, I mentioned three managers of this chat room whose personal identities and pictures have already been revealed to the general public. And out of three, I mentioned that this guy named Cho Jubin was the main guy, but Cho was only copying what this God God guy did to make some extra money. God God was the one who actually started this nth room chat room, and the chat room Cho was operating was called the Paksa chat room, named after his nickname Paksa. So basically, God God was the God God. I can't I can't get used to saying it. God God. God God. Anyways, this guy named God God was the actual mastermind behind this entire end from group chat. He was the one who came up with the idea to hack these Twitter users who were operating their deviation accounts. He was the one who threatened them with their personal information. And he was the one who started using Telegram to share these explicit contents that he forced these victims to create. And obviously this is basically the same thing Cho and his managers did. But the only difference is that Cho was in it for the money. He took a monetary profit from the members of the chat room by offering exclusive contents for 
people who are willing to pay more. But according to investigators, God God was apparently doing this entire thing for just fun. Fun. He never asked for subscription fees from his members and shared all his explicit contents for free. And it's also been revealed that he kept telling the members of his chat room that there is no way the police could catch him because he never received money from his members. And while he did receive some gift cards, and quoting exactly what he said word for word here, he gave away these gift cards to his slaves. And therefore, the police had no way to track him down if he just threw his phone away. But I mean, sykes man, the police wasn't as stupid as you thought, and after 10 months of investigation, the Korean police did catch you, so... Oof. It's also been revealed that last year, this God God guy gave the management position of this nth room group chat to a few other people and left the chat room because he had to study for the Korean SAT and get into college. <laughs> but I don't know, I mean, if he spent the time he wasted on operating all this disgusting telegram stuff to actually study, he probably should be done with college by now, so I don't know, I think that's a better way to spend your life, but, you know, his life, his ways. Anyways, this is it for today's KNN episode. If I answer some of your questions, like this video, comment what you guys think, share it to friends who might be interested, and subscribe to my channel for more. Until then guys, see you next time.